So again, I'm Javier Garcia from Tech Mahindra, and uh, I will explain to you, you know, the different ways you can you can contribute to the community. You being here is already a contribution, but uh, if you're feeling you, you can do for them that, then let's go ahead. So uh, let's start with uh, some resources for uh, for the developers developers up there. We have uh, four. Uh, well. I, I took some samples, but you have the development guidelines. Maybe I can open them. Does this work? Yes, it works. I hope you can see them. So this is a very nice uh, page for you to get started. Uh, there's lots of information here. I will cover that in the presentation, but in case you want to review it, then you have, you have the kind of information here as well. So very useful if you want to contribute. So uh, different ways, uh, which uh, you have information about everything. I will go into more details here on the slides. But report a bug, uh, the clone to project, configure the environment, uh, the different license headers that you need to include in, in the code that you create, how to commit uh, the changes, pretty much everything. So this page is quite comprehensive on the, on the information. Other interesting web page is developer how to. There's a more in detail uh, information on the different modules that the OSM has the Kafka, Zookeeper, the MBI, the Keystone, 4D, uh, RBAC, the Novos interface. Some nice diagrams here, at least for you to, if you want to go deeper into the OSM code, you have information here. Oh, we're licking the sound. <laughs> no, that's fine. So again, uh, some some interesting information here. To set up the ID for Python to develop everything. So I think this is also very interesting if you want to take a look at, at it and understand more the guts of OSM, what's happening. In terms of the ID, there's been a recent addition to the code to have auto-completion if you, uh, for the descriptors. I don't know if they mentioned that. I think they mentioned that at the beginning of the of the Hackfest. So that's also, I don't think it's included here yet, but this is also useful for uh, uh, Visual Studio, if uh, I'm not wrong. So, well, I took here one, one of the examples, the arrow. You here, you have more information on the actual internals of the arrow, so you can start tweaking and changing things if you feel like there's the need to it. And I have another one here, an example on how to upgrade the, the platform. So, I mean, it runs in Docker, latest version will run in Kubernetes. So this stuff will be, I guess, deprecated uh, in the near future because Upgrading with uh, Kubernetes and it's, it's really easy. But anyway, there's uh, pretty good information here. Then you can uh, you can go uh, and take a look at it to actually you know um, understand what's what's going on. So um, other important places that you should visit if you want to contribute to the community. So we have the Git web. Uh, Gerrit and Baxilla. If you're familiar with the DevOps workflow, these these tools you you know them already. But anyway, let's go through them. So Git web, you can see uh, basically every commit and every uh, project inside the the Git. This is a very nice web interface of the different components of OSM, the the uh, commits, the branches, everything. You can take a look at it here. So let's say I don't know. EIM, it was submitted three days ago. I mean, if you're familiar with Git, this will be uh, uh, very familiar to you as well. Different branches, you can take a look at this. Gerbit, this is an important place for uh, submissions. So this is what uh, this is like the first uh, step on on this sub code submission. So you see here we have uh, lots of uh, different issues that are open right now. Uh, the owner, uh, the project to, to which they belong to. 
uh, different branches. So uh, pretty interesting place, at least to take a look, because this is what the, the actual development of OSM is, is going on. So you can go here, see what are the current features the, the, that the people are working on. If you feel like you know something, you, you may contribute to this. Or if you feel like there's something missing, uh, I will explain to you in a few mom moments how to include a new one. And of course, the Bugzilla. Every bug is, report is reported here. So let me go to browse. Uh, of course, I don't have my login here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you need to log in. You need to use your Etsy account to log in here. Uh, I will explain to you how to get one. So you should, if you want to contribute, you should bookmark these web pages because you will use them a lot. So, um, in terms of help, so as I was uh, explaining before, you need help with OSM. Why, why, what should you do? Apart from being here and asking the people that are uh, experts on the OSM, you first search the wiki. There's lots of documentation there. Uh, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but uh, it's good enough. So at least to get a start, you can go there to the wiki and start using the search uh, box, which is very useful. Uh, of course, uh, if you want more uh, in-depth uh, information, go to the Slack. This is the, the place where everyone gathers and asks questions, very technical questions. Um, you will find lots of information there, lots of people wanting to contribute and, and help you. It's perfect. And of course, you also have, if you are uh, more like the traditional way you prefer, so send a mail to the OSM tech uh, mailing list. Uh, everyone that is on the Slack is also on the tech, so you will get uh, your, your replies there as well via email. Um, so in case you want to, to present something uh, to the community, there are regular calls uh, every week or every two weeks uh, for each of the, the following topics. So we have the tech call, which is the general technical topics for OSM every Thursday at uh, 4 p.m. And then we have different specialized, specialized calls for each of the topics. So for example, we have a DevOps call, the service assurance call, the information model call. So uh, if you have a more general question, then go to the tech call. And then if uh, there's something around more special, they will redirect you to, 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 the, uh, to the other ones. Um, let's not forget the Marcom call, uh, the marketing and communication. Uh, you can also contribute to the community not only with code, but with promotion of OSM. So if you want to promote OSM in an event or something like that, just uh, connect to the Marcom call and discuss there what, what you plan to do and you will get uh, information, guidelines, and, and support as well. Um, yeah, so you have uh, at the bottom the mailing list, the tech one for more technical topics and the Marcom, for, Marcom uh, mailing list for the uh, marketing and communication. This information is also available in, on the on the wiki page. All right, so let's uh, let's imagine. So, developer world for you. How do you contribute to that? Oh, as I was saying, there are multiple ways to contribute. Most common one is probably the uh, writing code, but there are some others. So, uh, writing test. Uh, if, if you were in the robot framework. Uh, session before, so tests are really important. Um, you may do them for your own, for your own sake, or because you feel like contributing. So um, you are more than welcome to to participate as well on that. Writing documentations, you know, open source projects uh, with documentation. Uh, this is the, the usually the weakest point uh, because it's, a, it's in a best effort uh, approach. So if you know, know how to do something and you feel like there's not enough information on the wiki or available to the public, yeah, feel free to, to expand that information, writing some documentation. It could be procedures, it could be code, it, uh, you know, if you want to, that is perfectly fine. And, and uh, yeah, so we are, uh, we are needing uh, good documentation. So. That's uh, also a very important point. Don't underestimate the, the, <laughs> the importance of contributing with documentation. Of course, helping in the DevOps uh, module uh, to uh, you know, increase uh, or improve the, the workflows or uh, in, uh, inc 
increase the number of tests or you know, any, any other thing you may, may think of. On the micro team, communications, as, as I was saying before, uh, promoting OSM is also uh, part of contributing to, to the community, so this is important. Or creating a POC. So if you want to showcase OSM with a POC, that's also a way to contribute. So, yeah. So let, let's imagine uh, most of the people in the hackfest probably think of, on contributing code because of a new feature or a functionality. So let's assume you want to contribute code. So first, the first thing you need is the Etsy OSM account to access the, the previous webs that I was showing before, the Gary and the Baxilla. You need an Etsy OM, uh, OSM account. So here it is. You may have a, an account either as an organization, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, as an organization, you can have, you, you, you can be a member or an OSM participant, depending on, depending on the, uh, on, on the category of your organization is, is, is classified, or as an individual developer. So I don't know if you have here, yes. So maybe I can click on this so you can see how to join. You will get redirected to we, to this web page. And um, you can see here, it's, uh, either if your company is an Etsy member, you just go over here. If uh, it's an OSM participant, then here. And if you want to be, you know, like an independent developer, you, that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. You can go and create an individual uh, contributor here. Just make sure that uh, whatever your organization, your university, uh, company, whatever. Take a look at it. Uh, if it's already um, listed in the participants, in the OSM participant, you can use that. You, you can use that. You don't need to create your own uh, personal Etsy account. It takes um, a short amount of time, so you just request it, and it gets approved, and you get your uh, your account. So once you once you get your account, uh, you, you you want to start uh, with the code. And so first thing, clone the repository in which you want to contribute. I have here the example of the Norbon interface. Choose whatever you want to contribute to. Uh, it could be one, it could be many. Pick the one you, 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 you want. So clone it in your local repository. This is the typical um, open source contribution. So maybe if you're familiar with it, this, you know, uh, this, you will know already these, these steps. This is important, install the commit message hook. It's important to identify whatever your commits are uh, to your account. It's one liner. Uh, you just make it executable, and then you start coding. You, uh, this is the most, uh, let's say, uh, difficult uh, step, because you start coding, you will uh, search for information on the wiki, you ask on Slack, you may you know, involve other modules, you need to, whatever there's a big change, uh, and you need help, you go to the tech calls, ask for help, explain them what you are doing, what you plan to do, what you need, and the committee will, will help you. So, Okay, so after uh, you've modified your, your code, it's important to add to uh, the Apache 2 license to whatever files you are modifying. Make sure that the, your, your changes are there you know, with GitDiff. Add them to the uh, to the commit and actually to the commit. So with git commit, you get the you put a message. Of course, the, most, the, the more descriptive, the better. <laughs> and you just push your, your changes to the upstream upstream with the git push. That, that's that simple. So now we go into the pipeline. Uh, I explained that before in the um, robot session, but let me recap a little bit. So what I was explaining before, it's on the first step, on the developer side. Once you, com you commit the code and then push it to the, to the uh, OSM repo, then it's uh, up to this pipeline to work. And you just wait for, for the feedback. We have four, four different stages, uh, automatic stages controlled by Jenkins. The first one will trigger uh, different pipelines, depending on the module, you, the module you are contributing to or the modules that are affected by your code. And they will go to stage two in which different uh, branches are triggered and they will be tested unitarily, so individually. 
the MBI, for example, in, uh, in these uh, slides. So they will trigger, and if everything goes well, if every test uh, that is already there passes, then a new artifact will be, a uh, package will be created and uploaded to the uh, artifact storage, the JFrog artifact tree. Then Jenkins will trigger the next stage, the stage number three. This stage, all different modules are either uh, recovered from the artifactory or the ones that are just created, put them all together, and then an OSM is deployed. You have OSM, and then you have sm what, what they call small, uh, smoke tests, tests. Up to now, uh, there are lots of tests that are done here using Python, but since the latest release, we are introducing Bubble Framework as a way to improve or make it easier to run different tests in an automated way, in a simpler way as well for OSM. If uh, all those different tests that are already available pass, then Jenkins will, will get back to, to Garrett and give you a plus one. So that means that your code is fine. So you haven't broke, broken anything, <laughs> at least Jenkins to notice, and it's fine. The last stage, stage number four, runs daily and gets uh, the, the latest version of stage three and uses the Etsy hype to actually deploy OSM in a live environment using uh, uh, different bins with different characteristics, uh, OpenStack, VMware, different uh, SDN controllers to make uh, what they call system tests or basically end-to-end -end tests to make sure that uh, the whole functionality of OSM is, is still working. So, yeah, you got the plus one from Jenkins. That is fine, but you need more. You need the, you need the approval from the MDL. So each OSM module as a module leader, and they have to review uh, your commit. Uh, after that, the Jenkins is passed. They may provide you some comments, like, I don't know, uh, <coughs> provide more uh, uh, comments here, uh, change this over here, maybe it's has suggestions to improve your code or uh, to make it nicer or more, uh, I don't know, in the format of OSM. Let me give you some hints. And once, uh, once you've addressed those uh, comments, then you will get a plus two. If not, if for some reason they don't think your code is ready to be integrated into OSM, they will give you a minus two and then you just need to, to address whatever they, they tell you. So it's like, I don't know, maybe change the name of the variables or I don't know, it may, it may, may be simple. So you just edit it and submit again your code. That's easy. And the whole process starts again. Once the MDL thinks uh, that uh, your code is fine, then they will give you a plus two and that's it. It's a matter of time that it will be integrated in the master branch and your code will be available in the in OSM. So uh, imagine that uh, you want to contribute with a new feature. So you've been using OSM for a while, you've been using it to deploy VMs, or, I don't know. But you, you need OSM to do something else. You, for some reason, for whatever project you are working on, you, you think that OSM could do something something more. So then that's a new feature. You, you request a new feature. First of all, uh, the recommendation is go first to the Gervit and search for new features because if it's something important or uh, common, uh, if it's not already on the OSM code, it may be already in the Gervit. At least maybe they're discussing that. So instead of going crazy and just submit your uh, future request, go, go there first, go to the Garrett and search for uh, uh, open features to see what, they are, what the community is uh, already discussing on. So yeah, if the, the feature that you want to submit is not there yet, then like for you, you can go on. So you just need to sub submit a, a markdown file with the description and you just need to follow a template. Maybe, I don't know if I can open it. It's linked here. Yes, so as you can see, this is the template that you need to follow. You put your title, the proposer, 
type of feature. This is a feature, so this do not need to be modified, the target. And what is the most important one here, the description. Very detailed description. What you plan to do, what you want to do. If you have more details on the uh, modules uh, that affects or if you need any other requirements, just put it here. The more descriptive, the, the better, of course. So how to do that? So you've prepared your file. You go to get it, uh, and you go to project list, and you check the OSM features. Maybe I can do that live. Well, I don't have I don't have my account, so okay. You need to be logged in to do that, and I don't have my account here. So, but anyway, sorry. Yeah. So you go to project list, OSM features, and then there's a button there that says create change. Easy. In the branch, you put master. We are keeping everything on the master branch for the new features. Put a description and click create. Then you will have there like. Uh, um, if you click on edit, you will uh, um, a pad to write your code will be open in the browser directly. Um, you can put either you can import your file, you can write directly on that uh, on that pad or whatever you prefer, and that's it. So well, you either open an, e an online editor and paste your feature, or you import it, uh, import the file that you've created, save it, and done editing. Once you have it, everything ready, publish the edit. And now your feature is available on the code. So for everyone to review. Um, the good thing is if you want your feature to be reviewed and you want to speed up the process, just inform the tech uh, community. So write an email to the to tech, uh, OSM tech list and request some feedback. So you just notify, I've created this request. I think this feature is important because of this and that. So please take a look at it, and then the whole chain starts. You will get feedback, and most probably there will be a number of iterations until you get everything ready to do the, what the community needs with the correct format and the correct descriptions. And then the, the, the TSC, most probably, and the MDLs will, will guide you to actually make your feature um, available and introduce in, in the OSM. So that's it. I have um, I have one slide here. In case uh, you find it useful, so just uh, a link to uh, documentation on how to uh, debug Docker's using PyCharm. This is kind of a maybe legacy link, but it's there in case you find it useful. Yes. So now maybe Mark, I don't know if he's still here. No, he's not. Okay. No. Okay. So, yeah. Well, Mike was wanted to, to talk to you about uh, a Veeam emulator that you can use. So maybe you want to test your code. You want to do uh, some kind of uh, trials with OSM, but you don't have your OpenStack or your VMware. There's the option to use uh, a Veeam emulator. Um, I don't have I don't have slides here, but uh, well, you can go into the wiki. Uh, and, and look for it because you have the, the information there in case you you want to do it. It's not a complete uh, Veeam. I mean, it's not like OpenStack or VMware, but it's uh, good enough so you can try something and you don't need to, to actually have your own big deployment in your laptop. So if there's any question, I'm more than happy to address them. And if not, this is it. Questions? I don't want to. That's it. Okay, thank you very much.